Prosecutors said that your story was lie after lie after lie. That's what they told the jury. Uh, I mean, of course they would say something like this. That's their job, to accuse me <laughs> of crimes. It's a story as fascinating as it was criminal. Anna Delvey, socialite or charlatan? German heiress or a grifting con artist who captivated New York City's elite, maintaining an image of fabulous success until it all came crashing down. People can't look away and they love to see a train wreck. They love to hate people like reality stars. And I think that Anna Sorkin falls in to that category. This is a story about a woman who pretended to be someone that she's not. She was really taking people for an absolute ride. She didn't do an honest day's work in her life in New York. The way she was living, dishing out $100 tips, living out of hotels, she was certainly living like she had that sort of money. How she supported that, I have no idea. After a short lifetime spent indulging in the best money could buy, Delvey, real name Anna Sorokin, this morning, the fate of an alleged scam artist is now in the hands of a jury. Was forced to face the web of lies she created. A New York City jury finding socialite Anna Sorokin, the so-called Soho grifter, guilty on eight counts, including grand larceny, attempted grand larceny, and theft of services. When you hear guilty, what do you think? I mean, you just deal with the consequences. What, am I supposed to collapse and cry? I don't know. Now, her saga immortalized in dramatic fashion by Netflix in the hit show, Inventing Anna. Anna Delvey is a masterpiece, bitches. All while Sorokin languishes in detention once again, held by immigration authorities, awaiting deportation to Germany. While she fights for yet another chance, and her fans form a quiet resistance, hoping for the saga of Anna Delvey to continue. There was something about Anna. She knew which people she needed to make feel important. And she also had this sort of aura about her where she's intriguing, and she used that. New York City. Here, Madison Avenue meets Wall Street Finance. And it's here in the early part of the last decade where we find a young Anna Sorokin, born in Russia, raised in Germany, transplanted to the Big Apple to find her American dream. How did you meet? Anna Delvey. I met her out one night in New York. I was out with friends and she just joined us late that evening. I certainly wish I had never met her. At the time, Rachel Deloach Williams was a picture editor at Vanity Fair. It's during her time at the magazine that Rachel meets Anna and an unlikely friendship begins to take root. What were your first impressions? She was slightly offbeat. She was quirky. Her voice was high pitched. She had a hard to place accent. They were both young, they were both in their 20s, they both recently moved to New York, and they wanted to be in circles that they didn't really belong to. I liked her, and so we had a lot of fun together. So these two formed a friendship, and Anna portrayed herself as having a lot of money and living a very lavish lifestyle, and Rachel was into that. Anna's backstory is mired in mystery. Those around her believed her to be an heiress to a vast fortune overseas, which was often supported by her tendency to spend lavishly on opulent dinners, tips, and nights out with friends. You would pay for things, mostly, when you two went out. Why? Well, she gave me an impression that she only made whatever, 60 or $70,000 a year. It's not a big deal for me to like pick up a tab, which is a couple hundred dollars. I thought it was a nice thing to do. Rachel fell hook, line, and sinker for the narrative that she was in line to inherit tens of millions of dollars. People have asked where they red flags. They never questioned that she was who she said she was. I never had reason to, and I wouldn't have thought that way. But beneath those mysteries existed a sobering truth about who the real Anna Delvey was. And she was no heiress, no. Far away from Manhattan skyscrapers, Anna's story began in a small town, thousands of miles away, in Russia. What was your childhood like? Were you happy? Yes. I, like, I grew up um, as a single child until my parents had another kid when I was almost 13. So I kind of see myself as a single child because I grew up by myself. How did you wind up in Germany as a family? Well, my dad always worked in Germany, so um, we just moved with him at some point. 
Anna lived in Germany in Eschweiler, which is, as Anna would say, more like upstate New York. To her, it was very boring. What did your parents do? My dad, he is like in um, infrared heating, solar energy business right now. And your mom? My mom, she's working with him. Hardworking people, good people, but certainly not rolling dough. She clearly felt she was above it and was a, a woman who dreamed far bigger than her, her horizons. Those dreams would take Anna to Paris, pursuing her lifelong interest in fashion. She eventually got a position at a glossy magazine called Purple. And before long, Anna Sorokin transformed into Anna Delvey. Where's the name Delvey come from? No, I just came up with that. You just made it up? Yes. <laughs> it's not a family name? No. You just <laughs> like that better than Sorokin? Yes. <laughs> Were you trying to escape something? I think it was about a new beginning and doing something new as opposed to like escaping anything. Escape or no escape, next thing you know, Anna crosses the ocean, she jumps into New York, becomes Anna Delvey, this larger than life persona. In New York, Anna creates a new life, immersing herself into the opulence and affluence of life in the fashion and finance capital of the world. During that time, I learned that she was working on an art foundation, um, club, restaurant, just everything. And the concept was very interesting and impressive, and she'd referred to this family trust she had, which I didn't pry about, but it sort of informed my understanding of her. And splurging on fabulous vacations. Since Anna was a German citizen, she needed to leave every three months in order to reset the visa. And instead of going back home to Germany, she suggested we take a trip somewhere warm. Me and Rachel, I kind of brainstormed where we should stay. We came up with La Mamunia and Marrakesh. This is some stunning, top of the line, like dripping in gold resort with butlers and private everything. It's a resort that's built for the 1%. Your eyes must have been popping oh, out of your absolutely. head. absolutely. It was, um, I mean, it was amazing until it wasn't. Anna, right from the get-go, said that she's paying. But when it's time to settle the bill, Anna's credit cards aren't going through. Hotel employees corner the women. And the men say, do you have a credit card? So I look at Anna, and she's like, can we just use it for now? She hands over her personal card, and she also hands over her corporate card. I leave early on Friday morning. When I land, I get a text message that the whole bill is being charged to my cards. How much? $62,000. $62,000. She owed me more money than I made in a year. At this stage, you don't have the money to pay Rachel. No. How was she responding? She had a, a billion and one excuses. I was suspicious at that point. When one domino falls, so too do the rest. And before long, Anna's con began to unravel, piece by piece. Anna relied on her credit card to pay things, so she wasn't able to fulfill other obligations like her hotel bill. July 2017, she is arrested for the first time, and it's for theft of services, and it relates to three things in New York. Unpaid bills at the Beekman, at the W Hotel, and at Le Parc Meridien. It's her first arrest, and everything really starts to kind of unravel. And that's when this story hits the New York Post. The wannabe socialite becomes a tabloid sensation. You eventually go to the district attorney's office, and what do you learn? I learned that there is an ongoing investigation into Anna Delvey, whose real name is Anna Sorokin. Remember, Anna was supposed to be opening this arts foundation. She went to banks and told them she had money overseas. The banks never gave Anna the loans, but she did get a line of credit, and prosecutors say she used that money and bad checks in order to fund her lavish lifestyle. This lavish lifestyle that Anna had been living, it all comes crashing down. Her lodgings are Rikers Correctional Facility. Delvey's charged with 10 different counts and found guilty on eight of them, including second degree grand larceny and theft of services. She's sentenced to four to 12 years in state prison and ordered to repay hundreds of thousands of dollars in restitution. You're there for 19 months. Yes. Did you have celebrity status in jail? 
I definitely did, yes. And then you strike a Netflix deal. Sorkin's case even capturing Hollywood's attention. Grey's Anatomy creator Shonda Rhimes behind an upcoming project for Netflix. She was offered over $300,000 for the deal. I felt like it was the only way to tell my story. Most people go to trial to be, to be found not guilty. She went to trial for the story. When we come back, out of prison, but out of time, just as Anna Delvey's story becomes a national sensation, her fight to stay in the country. Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.